immersive media and spatial computing can be relevant for a much wider audience than they are today. Through VR and AR, we can bring generations together and augment life at every age. I'm Cesara Windrum with AARP Innovation Labs, and in this session, we'll address the amazing opportunities that we're seeing in applying immersive media and spatial computing to solve some of the larger issues that our society is facing today, such as social isolation, health and wellness, and improving the quality of life for people of all ages. Also, we'll cover the challenges with the technology as we have it today that prevent mass adoption. And we'll talk about how we can take steps to help address those challenges and turn them into opportunities to benefit a wider audience and a growing market with the strongest buying power today in the States and in the world. Stick with me till the end and you will know how. First, a little bit about us. AARP is a social mission nonprofit organization serving over 100 million people. And we have over 38 million members. Our mission is to empower people to choose how they live as they age and be everyday innovators in aging. Our work spans from everything advocacy and policy in Washington, D.C., all the way to an extensive range of products and services, including media publications in all channels, print, web, mobile, and now immersive and virtual. Our printed magazine is the most read in the United States, in the United States and we hope that one day we're going to see similar successes uh, for our VR and AR uh, applications. The lab is our hub for all things innovation. And as part of my role in the lab, I'm heading up our work in virtual and augmented reality and employing immersive media and spatial computing to solve real world problems by taking a human-centered approach. Specifically, we've built Alco, that many of you probably saw last night as finalist at the Aggies for the Best Consumer App Award. We've built Alco as a platform of curated content with a mission to bring together the family connection and the VR and AR ecosystem. And it's such an honor to, and hugely validating to be recognized by the industry uh, in such a setting like, like at AWE. And I'll tell you all about Alcove very soon. For now, let me share how we started a while back by asking a few simple questions. What can immersive media do for the world beyond, beyond its uses in enterprise, entertainment, and gaming? Can it, can it bring people together? closer and more engaged despite distance travel or mobility constraints? Can it help reduce social isolation? Can it be used to improve health and, love, health and wellness levels in people of all ages? We start to find out. We did a lot of research. We started with academic studies from back in, in the days, looked at the history of VR, how it's being applied today. We interviewed experts and we started looking for, for missing links and opportunities. And then we took all that and we put it in front of real users. We've done dozens of focus groups and one-on-one -on -one sessions with users across all age groups from their mid thirties all the way to late seventies and even, uh, even eighties. And we discovered there's lots of opportunities but also challenges. And I'll tell you all about them. There's, there's quite a bunch. But let's start with the opportunities. We learned that immersive media gives us this 360 degrees canvas to, to completely immerse ourselves into, that we can paint with any data, information, or interactive experiences that can be relevant for many different audiences. Through its ability to create presence, Immersive media is now capable of opening opportunities for, for people to be present in locations that are further away, connect with people near and far, revisit beloved places, travel to new destinations, get immersed in experiences that feel good and bring up their overall health and wellness levels. People told us they want to do all that in VR and so much more. As a side note, talking about travel, let's dig in a little bit. And why is travel a big one? AARP travel research findings 
show that travel has direct impact, positive impact on health levels. And that happens during travel itself and also has long lasting effects afterwards. Isn't that so wonderful? But how many people cannot travel as much, especially after a certain age? Take my own grandmother, for example, in her last 10 years or so of life, she hardly left her house. With VR on the other hand, you don't need to leave your chair in your own living room in order to go places, and you can do it as often as you want. Scientific research is starting to show promising results as well. As many of you may know, for example, this one um, article published or study published last year by, by MIT, the findings show the potential for using VR applications to improving the quality of life among the aging population. More so, Stanford ha has found that when VR is done well, it has real potential to trick the brain, the human brain, into actually experiencing it for real. And I'm sure this is no news for most of you. you. You probably know this already, but what it means is that is that if we create realistic immersive media experiences, we have a real opportunity to bring comparable benefits to reality itself, even when it's about our own health and wellness. And yes, while no technology or simulation should fully replace reality, Immersive media is the closest to simulating reality that any other media has been able to do to this day. However, as we saw earlier, there's challenges. And the challenges with the consumer VR today, you may wanna think of them as barriers that, that stand in the way of the democratization of virtual and augmented reality. On one hand, there's big issues of awareness and perception. Many older adults either haven't heard of it or what's even worse, heard of it, but assume it's not for me, it's for kids, or it will make me sick. I've tried it three years ago, mm -mm, no, it's for enterprise. Uh, let big companies use it, why would I as a consumer need that? That's what most consumers assume based on what they hear from media. Well, on the other hand, <laughs> once they get past that, that first reaction and they do get to try it, issues of delivery and content experiences and environments that are unfamiliar, even disorienting for, for many and overwhelming, and availability of relevant content for everybody. You see, when, when entering consumer VR, you're typically exposed to large-scale surroundings and hundreds of experiences to browse through, most of them targeting indeed the younger demographics. And not surprisingly, many older adults feel somehow disoriented and, and overwhelmed. They, if, you're for, if you're, for example, anyone like my mom, and you put on a headset and all of a sudden you, f you find yourself floating atop of the Grand Canyon and you look down and you're like, oh my God, this is making me dizzy, get me out of here, I don't wanna, I don't wanna see it. Or you get past that, that moment and you start browsing through um, the large app store and you're finding a lot of cool roller coasters and shooting zombies games and really wonderful adrenaline driving experiences that many of us do enjoy, but maybe they're not quite for everybody. And then again, you step back and you say, yep, it's not for me, it's for kids. And it doesn't have to be. Most of it and some of it indeed is, but there's so much more to it. Here's a couple of seemingly random things to think about. Just think for a minute about space and scale in architecture. When you think of architecture throughout history, humankind has built big to show the overwhelming powers of God, states, uh, governments, kings, whatever, built to intimidate and oftentimes to keep invaders away. They tend to make us feel small and out of place. So why would we then be surprised when some of VR's large scale environments, designs and infinite scrolling menus uh, feel overwhelming for many. Also, personal preferences, brain patterns in preference forming specifically, we all know that we can indeed learn new things at any age, neuroplasticity, right? But do we necessarily want to? Our likes and preferences tend to get settled by about the time we hit our mid-30s. 
That's why we tend to stay loyal, loyal to trends, places, people, things, and music that shape us during the first three decades of our life. Cool. So what does this mean? That people over 35 or even more so, 50s or 60s, don't and won't care about a new technology like VR? Well, here's the problem. Many in the industry do make this assumption. And that is one of the biggest reasons why we're often seeing new technologies generally targeting younger, uh, younger audiences and younger demographics. But as our findings have shown, it is not about the technology. As much as it is about it as an enabler of valuable content and relevant experiences. So the key is in the content with the right approach there are tremendous opportunities across wide audiences. Because you see, new technology or not, it's all media after all. Interactive, immersive media that is. And who it's for and what it does or where it takes you is just like with cinema or printed magazines, television, websites, mobile apps. It's all about the content that we put in it, a horror movie or a romantic comedy, a Candy Crush game, or a puzzle. And yes, XR is great for games, and it's also great for enterprise simulations, but it doesn't have to be limited to that. <laughs> Probably the most important takeaway from talking to people and listening to them, we learned that while younger age groups, younger generations, May, to, may want to reinvent reality and create imaginary worlds in VR through games and simulations. Older adults want to stay in touch with the world as, they, as we know it and bring closer to them through VR the reality that otherwise might be out of touch or just harder to get to due to mobility issues, time, or budgetary constraints. See, connecting people, places, and things like never before through the power of technology may now be just emerging, but will become ubiquitous one day and bring the human connection to whole new levels in the years and decades to come. Which brings us to the last and most exciting part of this, com of, of this presentation. In order to get there, we need to break down those barriers. So how we do it, it's exactly what, what we've tried and what we've done at AARP. We took those challenges and turned them into opportunities. We started on this journey by applying design thinking and putting the user at the center of it all. Building trust by offering solutions from a trusted source. With familiar surroundings, simplicity, and accessibility. Built at human scale. And curated content that people want around entertainment, travel, health and wellness, and family. And so we created a platform of curated content that takes into account the needs and considerations of an ageless consumer and brings generational, intergenerational families together in VR. We named it Alcove and we launched it at CES, the Consumer Electronics Show, the, in this past January. Here's a quick trailer. Users step into a welcoming home built at human scale with familiar elements that help build trust with the new medium. From here, they can start to navigate the various spaces and rooms of the house and start discovering the magic that awaits in VR, from traveling the world from the skies to the largest cities to the ocean floor. to engaging into wellness activities. Meditation. <coughs> and breathing exercises. Cognitive games. All in one place, your family corner in VR. We've been getting amazing feedback, while still only in beta or early access in the Oculus Go App Store. 
People are using it with their families and they absolutely love it. And this is really only the beginning. Alcove today is not even 5% of what it could be. Alcove currently includes content from five different content creators and we hope to grow this over time with, um, with more unique and relevant experiences and content pieces that intergenerational families will enjoy as well as with new formats, AR and mixed reality versions that could bring you as holograms in the real living room of your grandparents, not just as avatars in computer generated environments. The vision for Alcove is that any developer and content creator could be part of it. And the opportunity is bigger than you may think. Many of you probably know that the 50 plus market is fast growing. 10,000 people are turning 50 every day in the United States. But what you probably didn't know is that they have the strongest buying power. For every $1 spent in the United States, 51 cents are coming from a person over 50. And here's the fun part for you. By 2030, Americans 50 plus will spend upwards of $84 billion on technology products a year. $84 billion per year. And we don't really like to think about it, but you see it coming. We're all aging since the day we're born. <laughs> and lifespan is increasing. That's the good news. Did you know that a 10 year old today has a 50% chance to living till past 100 years old? And there's even more. We see the younger generations today more connected and loyal to family and grandparents than most of us, most other generations in the past several decades had been. They genuinely care about their elders and want to spend more time with them, even though they oftentimes live hundreds, sometimes even thousand miles away. So in closing, if there is one thing that I want you to take away from this session, I want it to be this. By creating more content for an ageless consumer, not only do we take advantage of the longevity economy, but also attract more of everybody. Building solutions that go across generations is a win, win, win across the board. Consumers live better, commercial businesses and enterprises and startups thrive, and the world evolves. So, how do you create immersive media for every age? Connect with us, and let's keep building together. Thank you.